Hey everyone, TB Shores here. It is April the 20th, 2015. I want to pick back up on our discussions about the wafer. Uh, I think I'm going to keep this pretty brief. We're just going to touch back on an issue or two concerning the wafer and any, how would you say, uh, any areas concerning the wafer that we've not discussed as it comes up in future videos, we will flip back to the wafer and discuss things such as how we see it as the seal. Right now, the Lord has got me focused on how we see it as the joining together. Um, if you recall, whenever we looked at the unleavened bread, as it is used in communion, we discovered that it means a joining together of minds or spirits. And then over here in this other definition, we get a similar um, definition going on here with this fastening together. And if you remember, we discussed how a wafer is used in woodwork to take two pieces to join them together as one. And that is what the Lord's got us focused on. Um, he's also took me back to Exodus, where we see uh, Adam and Eve being, being coming husband and wife, and how they become one flesh as God intended for husband and wife. And we all know the Bible teaches that the mystery um, of Christ's relationship to the bride uh, is seen in the relationship between the husband and wife. Uh, how they are to be as one. And I'm not sure just exactly how far we're going to get into to that exact or looking at the exact thing of one flesh, I know the Lord's had me touch on it in some of my studies, but the, the main thing right now is I want to focus on where we've been just briefly. But keep in mind, this is all about the joining together, okay? Becoming one with, with Christ. And if you recall in the last video that I did on the wafer, we looked at how the unleavened bread is used in the Afikoman. Now, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, so please forgive me if I'm butchering the word. But how it represents the burial of Christ. And then the Lord had taken me back to the scripture in Matthew 27, where he originally showed me how that, based on these scriptures, of the burial of Christ, we see a picture of the bride and her linen and her being sealed away um, in a secret place or a chamber um, and how she is hidden in the rock, which our rock is Christ. And then, of course, the seal where the, the stone is rolled to the door. And the Lord had used that to show me how that Christ is a picture of the bride. And if you remember in my earlier videos, this is like maybe a couple years ago, when the Lord first showed me about the bride and the backslidden and the lost, and then recently he showed me how they are represented. Then he showed me how the bride is represented by Christ. The lost is represented by Paul. And the backslidden are represented by Jonah. And then recently he has shown me how these groups are represented again in the harvest. And the barley harvest is about the bride. And the wheat harvest is about the backslidden. And the grape harvest is about the lost. And the thing that I want to point out right now is some other things the Lord has shown me concerning these harvests. Now, I'm just going to touch on this briefly, and again, um, Brother Todd of Hidden Bride, 
he has, uh, I think it was his video that I watched tonight, where he was confirming what I'm about to tell you that the Lord has shown me. Now, we know when we were looking in Leviticus 23, we learned about, bear with me, I've dropped my notebook. We learned about, um, with the harvest, how that the barley and the wheat are the grain harvest, and they represent the church, because we've got two groups in the church. We have the bride is part of the church, and she is the part of the church that is ready, that is watching for the return of our Savior to come and receive us unto himself. Um, you know, repeatedly we're told in the New Testament to watch, to watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape the things that will come. Well, we can know that we will escape these things by our relationship with him. Um, I don't mean to be too blunt or too harsh, but when you're looking at the two groups that make up the bride, I mean, excuse me, that make up the church, those that make up the bride are the ones who are following Christ, the ones who are seeking after him, the ones who, um, like I discussed in my last video, uh, where the Lord had shown me about his best, the ones that are his best. That's the bride. Those that may have come to Christ at some point, but are not following him they're out here in the world they are not part of the bride they are in the wheat harvest they will come back to him but they've got some refining to go that's why they're not in the in the barley which is the bride because the barley matures before the wheat does and that's why the barley goes first and the lord it just seems so perfect that he represent this with the grains concerning the church because it's clear to see how that that matures spiritually, that that is matured when he comes, will be harvested first. And then they go and are transformed. And it's all about us becoming as one. Now, the Lord showed me something the other night. That had to do, I'm not even sure how to explain this to you, but he showed me in a, it was kind of like a dream, but it was, it was unlike anything I'd ever seen. It was more like in the spirit. He was showing me something in the spirit while I slept. It wasn't really a dream and how this flesh is our veil. It separates us from God and how that when this transformation takes place, it's not just a changing from this to something else. It is about that veil that separates us, this flesh, this veil that separates us from God because flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. But it's about this veil being removed. It's like a curtain and it's going to be lifted. And what we were originally intended to be will be restored. It's all about restoration. Restoring us back to our former standing with God and restoring creation back to its former glory. Everything being restored back to its former glory with God. And that is what he's got me and another lady that the Lord has brought me and her together. Um, oh, wow. Working on some things for him. And it's all about everything being restored back to its former glory. We will be restored back to our former glory, which is like him. I know some of you are going to say, you stepped over the line this time, Teresa, but no, I have not. I know what the Lord has shown me. Um, 
We are going to be glorified. Scripture teaches us that we will be like him. Read your Bible. It teaches us we will be like him. Um, I don't say that in a prideful way. I say that in an astounded way. Um, when the Lord hit me with this, showing me this in the spirit the other night, uh, and it was while I was asleep, when I woke up, I was, I cried. I cried when I realized the depth of what he had shown me. And uh, he he's revealing even more things to me. And um, the lady that the Lord has me working with right now, her name is Lou. Uh, the Lord works through her in a, a way that just absolutely leaves me in awe. Um, but anyway, he's got us working together on some things and it is just totally amazing. And it, and it goes back to what he shown me in the spirit the other night about this veil is fixing to be lifted from us and we will become as him. Um, the thing I wanted to get back to with the harvest that brother Todd had confirmed again tonight i think he said this before but as we look at the feast in leviticus we see the passover we see the feast of unleavened bread um we see the feast of first fruits um and i'm thinking the next on the list is the feast of pentecost well pentecost if you look in the new testament we know that Pentecost was when the church began. That is when the church age began, was on Pentecost. The Holy Spirit, Christ had ascended. Ten days later, the Holy Spirit came down, and the church age began. And uh, I don't know if any of you watch J.D. Farag. Uh, I won't say that I always agree with him, but he is speaking many truths Um I enjoy watching him because he really um, brings to life the events of this world and prophecy and how they mesh together. But the thing that caught my attention was a couple of weeks ago, uh, he had a video and he spoke of this very thing. And he was speaking about the feast. And the Lord had shown me how that... Pentecost was when the Holy Spirit came. And Pentecost, it's like the Lord just put it in my spirit. Pentecost will be when the Holy Spirit leaves. But I didn't know how I was to explain that rather to you rather than saying the Lord just showed me. He just put it in my spirit. And people want more than that. They want something to, to put that, to put on that, that they can say, okay, because we know that because okay so what jd farag was pointing out was how that we had been through these feasts and when we get to pentecost it was when the holy spirit came and the church age began and this makes so much sense what he said and it goes right along with what the lord had had put in my spirit about pentecost being the time for the holy spirit to leave uh, he said that theoretically we are still in the Feast of Pentecost because we are still in the church age, which makes absolutely good sense. Uh, the Holy Spirit came. It began the church age. It began the time of grace. And when the Holy Spirit leaves, the church age will end and the time of grace will be done. And... What I feel the Lord is showing me is when we go through this, this barley harvest and this wheat harvest and we get to Pentecost because Pentecost is the end of the wheat harvest, then that is time for the church age to end. Now, something else that Brother Todd pointed out was how, uh, I don't remember just how he phrased it, but the gist of it is uh, because of man's counting and man's uh, kind of distorted God's calendar, we're not sure exactly what falls when. And he's absolutely right. 
That's something the Lord keeps driving home to me. Uh, the dates that are on the Hebrew calendar, I mean, they are set. You can print it off. I mean, it's set. And, and you know, um, it's the same with the calendar that we use. But God gauges things different than we do in time. So we have to take that in consideration when we're talking about the things of the Lord. I'm going to cut this off right here and start another video. Um, we'll pick back up on this when I come back. I love you. Bye-bye.